Incredible, incredible interview guest, Hot Diggity Demon. Hello. Hello. Oh, welcome to the most glitch-ridden podcast on Earth. <laughs> all right. Uh, Happy to be here. Could okay, it be worse? So, all right. Yeah. Microphone's working. Skype's working. Okay, we finally got everything together. God so, damn. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took us like says, five minutes. It took us a lot longer than it should have. Moving on. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and move on. Um, uh, just real fast, uh, Hot Diggity, how long are you going to be able to be on call with us? You know, I can, I I can be here as long as you need me, and I'll be. Uh, I can I can do this for as long as as your mind will allow me to do it. All right, sounds good. Uh, that sounds Woo! like a plan. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and start right off with news, as we always do. We've... What's the wait? What? Huh? It's news, <laughs> then interview right after. Yes. Well, how long is the news going to take? Eh, fifteen minutes roughly. What am I supposed to be doing while you're doing that? <laughs> Talk, talking and making funny. Same thing that you're doing. You're doing well. Yes. Yeah, you can just make fun of everything we're talking just about. Just follow our lead. I don't yeah, like the sound of this at all. It's already <laughs> off to a bad start. It could be worse. It could be a lot worse. So the people, t- people, don't tune don't in it. people are tuning into this podcast to hear me, and already they're not going to be hearing me. And I'm the one that <laughs> they're... they're- I'd say they're hearing you they're damn, coming here for. I would say they're hearing you a good amount. I'd say you're doing pretty well. Oh yeah, yeah. they're <laughs> definitely getting follow in here for our already. lead, and you'll do fine. Well, if you know, this is all. Everything that's going to happen is going to be by way of your actions. And if you want to lose listeners, then I guess that's up to you, and that's that's your prerogative. <laughs> but people are here for me, and now already things are going in the wrong direction. Son of a bitch, the man is right. Circuit bump the news. We're starting with the interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, can't, I can't argue with uh, with an interview guest. That's <laughs> and right. then there's that. All right. All right. Look, oh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll fork over the news for later. Let's go ahead and get to the meat and potatoes, which is the interview. We'll let All our right. illustrious co-host, D-Pad, go ahead and get started. And everybody else, um, let's enjoy the interview. Alrighty, you all know why we're here, you know who's up for tonight, it's Hot Diggy Demon, crazy amazing animator, how you doing tonight my lad? You know, I'm just, I'm doing amazing, it's a beautiful day, it's the kind of day where you're just happy to be alive. Damn right, alright, so why don't we get right into it then, now, my first question is, how did you first get into animation, what was your first experience with it? So that's, that's immediately what we're just going to be going to, is yeah. discussing that. Yeah, how'd you start into it? Man, I don't know. It's you know, you just do it. You just you start doing it. I'm not going to be able to yield the funny or interesting response to that question. Hey, you don't need one. Just needs to be straight up. Well, already this is bush league. You got to ask me a question that nobody's asked me before. Well, it's not shocking, man. You've been in how many interviews? I would imagine. Just countless. I, countless. Yeah. I don't even count them. Well, there you and go. I can't Count, I can't count very high, so that's not an impressive thing to say on my behalf. All right, then. So, <laughs> already I can see this is going to be a trip and a half. So then, let's move on, if that's really all you got for me on that. So then, what got you into My Little Pony? Why did you start watching the actual show? Who says I watch it? Uh, I believe you do. I've never said that. Have you not? Now, you... You're a... You're you're a brony. You're what they call a brony. Yes, I am. No, what is a brony? Basically, someone who watches My Little Ponies and, a f- and is a fan of it. This is not you, I'm assuming, by your reaction. That's what a brony is. Oh, it's a lot more than that, but that's the general definition. That's disgusting. Why would anybody do that? Well, you tell me. You seem to know. You seem to know more. That's what a brony has been this whole time. That's what I'm involved in now. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right, it's God. It's goddamn pathetic, is what it is. Straight. Happens. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. All right, I'll try. And you call this an interview, you haven't even asked me who I am yet. You haven't even got, you haven't even had me explain what my identity is. 
Well, then would you care to explain it? Who I am? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm nobody, man. I'm a tramp. I'm a bum. I'm a hobo. I'm a boxcar and a jug of wine. And I'm a straight razor if you get too close to me. You're an animator and a very popular one, and that's what I want to be hearing about tonight. That's conjecture. I'm not... can neither confirm nor deny those accusations. Well, plead the fifth by the sound of it. So, well, let me ask you this. Am I going to be getting an interview? Am I going to be getting any information tonight? You can be, uh, you can be interviewed, and you can be an interviewee, and you can do an interview. It's all up to you. It's what you want to do, because it's all, it, you know, this all just exists within your mind, man. So it does. So then, uh, why don't we do this? Let's do this. Let's do this real, little role playing. I'll be the interviewer, and you be the interviewee. You be the person I'm interviewing. So, you know, I dig that, man. All right, then. down. All right, then. Then tell me this: What made you create the .dot mov series, the Pony .dot movs? Man, I mean, you know, it's just comedy, dude. You know, I mean, people, they can just go and they can watch it and they can have an understanding of why it exists. You know, I mean, from from the world of darkness, I did let loose uh, demons and devils in the power of scorpions to torment. And that's why that exists. And that's why people watch it, because that's what they're into. But that's not my responsibility. I can't take responsibility for that. But you can take responsibility for the creation of the videos. Yeah, I created it. But I did not instruct other people to create it. And that's why it's something that I take responsibility for directly myself. Dig man? Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Now, now, I have to wonder, why did you name this... Why did you choose MOV as the name of the series? Because that's a video format, right? So, why not go with a name that's like... I, I don't know, like... Friendship is Insane, or some title like that. Why use the video format for the name? Because they're video files. Hmm. Straight, simple to remember. I like it. Let's move on. Now, the for the dot moves, were you planning on them being a series of the entire main six from the beginning, or no, was... no, 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 definitely not, definitely not. So it was the answer. So it was spurred that question. By popularity. So it was spurred by the popularity of the first one. Yes. Alrighty. Is now, the answer. Now I've got to wonder: How did you come up with the personalities for each of the main six in the Dot Move universe? There, I mean, for Pinky, I can understand she's a party maniac. It's that's just pretty much her, regardless. And in the real world, yeah. She'd probably be on her ass drunk most of the time, but how about the others? Like, why is Rainbow Dash, like, a swag magnet? Man, I don't, I don't know. I'm not gonna, I mean, you're, you're asking me questions of things that just exist in your mind and things that aren't, you know, that aren't cemented in, in this kind of reality, and, you know, you're asking me questions about the physical world. And I mean, you know, these things, these things that you're asking about, they're not even concrete, man. I mean, I don't, I don't live in the physical world. I live in the spiritual world. That's where I live. And I don't even know if you have the capacity to understand that. I can understand it, but I don't live in it. And I admit to that. I probably can live on the same plane as you. That's why you live in it. And I don't. There's no, I mean, there's no answer. It's just, it's all on the surface. You got to look on the surface, and you, when you look on the surface, you see yourself, man. That's but what if you're just, but what if you're just scratching at the surface? What's beneath the surface? That's what I want. There's nothing. It's just surface. That's all it is, man. All right. Can you get that into your brain? I can try. Best I can do. So why don't we move on? Why did you make the Japple Act Tumblr? It's uh, that was a response to uh, Apple.mov, I believe. Why? Mm -hmm. Why did you make uh, her into a Tumblr instead of any of the others? Because that it was the first one that was made, so it seemed appropriate. 
So she was not she wasn't going to be in the cartoons anymore. So people were going to say, "Hey, what happened to what's her face?" Well, she's there. She's kind of she's going to be coming back. And you know, I mean, I, people they need uh, that character, they need to have that character around, I guess. All right. Well, that begs the question, though, why do we not see any of the others again? I mean, Rarity is gone as well. I mean, Rainbow Dash is dead, so that makes sense. But Rarity is gone as well. Which, will we ever be seeing Rarity again? Well, I mean, you know, they just, I mean, when a character has an episode, it's like they're, you know, they die and then they don't come back. So. You know, after each episode comes out, it's like, that character's done, man. Because it's like, their story's been told. And we don't need to hear it again and again. Alright. That makes sense. I can understand that. So, then, why is Twilight reoccurring, then? Are you just gonna, I mean... Oh my, Jesus Christ. You're just gonna ask me these questions, and you're never gonna stop, and they're all the same. They're, re they're related. Not the same, though. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like there's more important things for us to be discussing. Well, related to a Tumblr and some videos, I can't say, but I'm pretty sure I'm doing what I got here. So, in which case, why don't we just move along before things get too crazy. So, getting back to the Tumblr for a moment, what made you decide to change its tone from the wacky response Tumblr into a dramatic series? I, I was reading through it, and it's it's gotten very deep and very plot-driven. It's extremely impressive but what made you decide to do that listen to me for one second okay right. just just stop talking for one goddamn minute for, for here and just listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth you're just tap dancing around the issue these bronies that are listening to this show this show right now and that are watching my cartoons and are reading this Tumblr, they think I'm the devil and they look at me and they see me as the person where they can say, that's the bad guy, now I feel better about myself. Why is that not what we're talking about? Well, why would we need to talk about that? And now you've just stated it, so I'd say it's out there. And that's why we need to talk about it. Well, then please, by all means, talk about it. You know, these people, they they look at me and they say, you know, why? now I look at him and I, I see, I see the problem, I identify it. Now I don't need to feel guilt. But do you feel guilt for the things that you've done? I feel plenty of guilt for some of the things I've done, but if you're just feeling guilty I'm your whole life, you're not going to go anywhere. Listen, I'm going to explain to you what the problem is here. People watch my cartoons and they say, this is disgusting, these are gross. They say, uh, it's perverting of something that's pure and innocent. My Little Pony, it's a cartoon for little girls. Let me tell you about My Little Pony. Everybody who watches this show is perverted. They're sick. I'm just, I'm just giving them a reflection of themselves. So you believe what you create to be a reflection of the Brony community. That's right. Because you know what? If you look down on me, you'll see a fool. If you look up at me, you'll see God. But if you look directly at me, you'll see yourself. All right. That's all, right, all that's I've ever net. been and that's all I've ever wanted to be. Is uh, You know, people think that guy is the devil or that guy is Jesus Christ, but I've only ever been myself. We can only ever be who we are. That's right. All right then. So can I get? So can can we get back? Can I take you back? Can I take you back with me for a little while? Just get you to answer a few a few questions of mine. Now I'm do with you. Do what you got to do because that's your prerogative. Yes, it is. And Tonight we're all responsible for ourselves in this world. Absolutely. All right then. So, getting back to getting back. Uh, what about what's happening exactly with the Jackal with the Jackal app Tumblr? Will you be answering questions again for it in the future? Because now it's you just, just doing the Jackal app. I'm sorry, Jackal app. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's not yeah. the correct. No, name. it's not. 
It's it, The name is Jack Black, and you're right. Now, will That's Jack right. Black be answering questions again in the future when the story is finished? No. The tumble will be finished uh, once the story is? Yes. All right, then. Now, you know, you're asking me questions that you could know the answer to with 30 seconds of research. Possibly so, but I ask them because they don't know. They could know with 30 seconds of research. Yes, they could. But that's my this job. All that, but maybe your job should be to ask questions that people could uh, not get the answers to otherwise. Some people don't want to do the research, so my job is to bring them that research without them having to do anything. Is it lazy of them? Maybe so, but that's my job. But maybe people could get answers to questions that they couldn't get by researching because the answers aren't out there in physical form in the physical world. Well, I'm not disagreeing with you. That's the, those I are the simply, questions. I am simply that saying that it's my job. That you have to be them. asking. Those are the questions that you have to be asking me, and you're not asking. Well, I can't say I live in in the world or the plane that you do, so I can't exactly ask the questions that you wanted me to ask them. I can only ask the questions that they want me to ask. And again, that is my job. Do you think that I've been a positive influence or a negative influence on the world of these bronies? That's not my job to say. Well, what's your what, personal um, opinion? Well, well, let me ask you instead. What's your opinion on that? What do you feel you've been? Well, I asked, I asked you first. I asked you second. Well, the person who had the question asked them first has to answer first. First is the worst, second is the best. I don't see the logic behind that, other than that it rhymes. I think the fact that it rhymes is good logic. Well, I mean, it's like I said, people look at me and they, you know, they see the devil, and, you know, I pro you could say that I'm probably one of the most dangerous men in the world if I, I want to be, but I never wanted to be anything but me. I'm not of this generation. I'm not involved in the bronies. I don't, I'm not part of them. I only interact with them in the physical realm. All right, then. All right. So, moving right, moving right along. Now, I have to wonder, do you care about this fandom at all? The brony fandom, that is. Is there a I just told you I'm not part of it. Yes, I I'm just aware. told you that. I'm aware, and I remember that. However, not being a part of the fandom and liking it are two very different things. We actually had a guest in here a few weeks ago that is not a brony by any means. All right. Well, I said I'm not a part of it. I didn't say you were a part of it. If you say, if someone comes up to me and says, Hey, Max, I say, yeah, and they say, I'm going to watch the show, My Little Pony. I say, yeah, and they'll say, what do you think of that? I say, I don't think about it. It's not my it's not my part to judge you for what you've done. That's only God's job to do. God is the one who judges you. I don't look at you and say that's wrong or right, and I'm not the one who's going to partake in it because I do not do things that society deems as incorrect because I've been there and I don't do that again, and I've learned my lesson. Well, then, hu then humor there. me. Then humor me with this. Let's let's pretend for a moment that you were. With that you were with most of us here in the physical world, that you have not, tr that you do not live in the spiritual world. Now, humor me with that for a moment, and just and tell you know me, what I mean when I say spiritual. Well, I'm talking about my mind. I'm quite aware of what you mean. We all live in our mind, but there is a world outside of our mind that we need to interact in. Okay. So, with me here, interact in that world, the world that I am currently in right now. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Let me ask you this. I know this is a question you've you've been asked before. I know that yeah. you've been through it, but not everyone knows. And this this is questions that can be done with research, but they're here now and they want to hear it. What are your tools of the trade? What do you use to make your animations? Uh, flash. Flash. Any tablets? Anything like that? I use a tablet. I use oh. a Cintiq. A Cintiq? Oh, very nice. Mm. It's expensive as heck. Very expensive. Uh, how much would you say a decent tablet goes for? That's not necessarily a uh, Cintiq. I, mm, why? Why would you, would you even ask me that? Well, I can only assume that you priced them before buying a Cintiq. I mean, I only know how much mine costs, though. Hmm. 
All right, then. Okay, so then, which of your animations would you call your best work? You've, I mean, you've got the MOVs, Wacky Game Jokes, Jerry, all those amazing ones. I made a, I made a cartoon called Apocalypse Meow, and that's my favorite cartoon, because it's like uh, Apocalypse Now, but with cats. What is Apocalypse Now? You don't know what Apocalypse Now is? I can't say I do. I can't. Hang on. I got a headache all of a sudden. Oh. Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. How old are you? Me? I am 19, sir. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now, what do you want to do with your life? Me? Because of all this, yeah. I found a home in journalism. Now, Jer however, uh, this is not, however, this is neither here nor there right now, because I am the interviewer at this point. Later on, we can discuss this if you're curious about it, but it is my job currently to ask you what you're doing. You want to be a journalist? Now, now ex explain to me something. Do you feel like you want to be a journalist because of because of you, because of what the world has made you into, or because you want to expose something to the world that only you can see? No, I actually just want to do it because of my preferred skill set. I wanted to be a game designer up until, like, four weeks ago. But, again, this is not the question. Well, let me ask What you, is the skill set that you're talking about? No, I'm not going to humor you with this, because right now, my job here is to interview you about the work you do, not for you to interview me about mine. But you're just asking me questions that I've already been asked a million well, that's times. That's not shocking, but not and everyone that people has know seen the answer to. Not everyone has seen an interview with you. They come here. They came here tonight because not everyone has seen an interview with you, and you have a lot of your fans here. There's a reason that we broke in 600 viewers. That is because you know what I, you know what I want to do is there's something that I do want to specifically talk about, and I think that as an interviewer. You need to humor whatever it is that I want to talk to, whatever I, whatever it is that I want to talk about, and however I want to speak my mind. And, and I'm you're happy not to do that, that, but and I'm happy to do that, but I'm not the subject. Is the thing? Okay, but I am the subject, and that means that I call the shots. Fair enough. What is it you would like to discuss? I want to talk about how the how these bronies, if that really is what they are called, how they are perceiving me, and how they are saying. That I am the bad boy. Now, why do you think they're saying that? Because I've I've heard it. Because I am not part of that generation, but I know how that generation feels, and I know what is on the minds of that generation. Now, I can't dislike these people, and I can't say that these people are bad because they like My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. But what they need to realize is they haven't gotten long before they kill themselves because they are crazy and you can project that back at me but I am the only I am only what lives inside of each and every one of you well let me ask you this do you feel that do you feel yourself responsible for what it is that they are destined to do them to do to themselves you know <laughs> You you can't ask me if I if I feel bad. You can't you can't say, oh, do you feel blame? Are you mad? Do, uh, do you feel uh uh goobly fool blah 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 by way of your actions. Don't you understand that? Of course, we're all responsible for what we do. We can't be made to do anything. We do only what it is that we make ourselves do. And you still don't understand. Because we're not. still living in this world where people are not understanding the consequences of, the, of their actions. Jesus Christ said it 2,000 years ago, and you didn't listen to him. Now, what if... Many of us understand the consequences of our actions, but choose to do wrong or what we 
as society believe is wrong, or maybe even as we ourselves believe to be wrong. Anyway, well, the, you know, it's just then you can you can categorize people into two different subsets: people who want to live and people who want to die. People who want to live, you get on the right, and you come with me, and you do the things that I say. People who want to die, you go to the left, and have a nice life, living the living the consequences of what you do. And I can't be held responsible. I can't be held responsible because, like I said a million times, I do not live in that physical world. I don't break the law. I don't go outside of what people consider to be normal. I've seen that world, and I don't like it, so I reject it because I've been there, and I know what it's like. But do you not have laws in the world you live in? The only law, the, the only law that I live by is the law of God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. And I follow those laws, and I believe in them. And I don't do anything to my brother that I wouldn't have my brother do to me. And that's just common sense. And I don't have to explain it to anybody. It's right, you don't. something that's innate that we're born with. It's in our bones. It's in our DNA. The animals know it. We know it. All living things know it. It's not something that you have to tap into. It's innate. Well, I'd say you, I would say that you've said it all. Next question. Are you crazy? Next question for you or next question for me? Next question for me. Well, I, again, I don't live in this world that you do, so I can't question you based on what you I'd say so. I'm definitely not. But you can this. consider this. You can consider this a learning experience, and know that afterwards you'll be a better journalist because of it. So I can think about agree. in that respect. I agree. Right. You know what? If you this is definitely you, a curveball. It's, it. it's interesting to be with this, to be in here with this. I can hear somebody else. Talking. What are they saying? I don't know who's talking. Who said that? I'm not sure. You gonna speak up, or are you gonna be a coward? Sorry, audio issues. Don't worry about it. Ah, I guess coward. Well, he did speak up. Next well, question. All right, next question. Well, tell me then. Let's let me get back to what you do in this world. I want to know. You're here tonight to discuss what you do with animations. That's what we want to know tonight. And yes, you have yes. discussed them. You have yes. discussed them previously, and it can be found with research. But then let me ask you this. Why, why should it? Why can't they, those that are here right now, hear it, from your, hear it from your lips again, even though it's been repeated? Because there's more important things to talk about. Well, what's more important than what about, they came here for? You could, you could talk about how I feel about the public. The public is a bunch of ants. They feed on fear, and they're a bunch of people who are looking for some place to put their blame. They're a bunch of chickens pecking at each other. And they look at me, and they say, if that guy feels guilty, and if that guy is put into solitary confinement, then I can feel all right about the life that I live. And they can, they can look at me, and they can say, that guy's crazy. But you know what? A long time ago... Being crazy meant something. Nowadays, everybody's crazy, and it doesn't mean anything. Because I'm a guy who took something called My Little Pony, and I made it for adults. And that means that I'm sick. And they can look at me and feel better about themselves. Well, you brought up something interesting. What did crazy mean in the past that it doesn't mean now? It doesn't mean anything. Because it, you could define craziness as divergence from the norm. Nowadays, there is no norm. What's normal anymore? It doesn't exist. It's not a thing. But is that not the kind of thing that makes all of us unique? Well, I guess that is the kind of thing that makes all of us unique. I guess that's a good point. 
I would definitely say we're all deaf. Uh, excuse me. I would definitely say we're all crazy within our own rights, and that gives us skills that no other person beside ourselves has. You have yours, and I have mine. Some of us have yet to discover them, and some even won't. Yeah, I guess. We all, we all have them. Mm-hmm. So then, what is it I think, that you would like to I think to you're discuss? finally starting to understand. I think you really are. Fi- now you're starting to get it. Well, and you can, you so. know, you can, uh, you can say, well, you know, you look at my cartoons, you think, well, this guy's, he's bastardizing something that's pure and innocent. Uh, no, wait, what, what, what know, exactly I, is pure and innocent now? Just well, something that's why that the, doesn't have people swearing or killing each other? Is that really innocent? That's, that's why these bronies like this show. You're a brony. You said that you're a brony and that you believe in God. You said those things. I did not say I believe in God. I do, mind you, but I did not say that I do. You said that you're a brony. Yes, I did. Now, you like this show, My Little Pony Friendship is, is uh, Spectacular. Yes, I do. But now you're assuming why I like the show. I never said why I like this show. Now, why do you like this show? Explain it to me like I'm a child. No. The reason I like My Little Pony is because it offers something, a sense of nostalgia, something that cartoons these days do not offer me. Watching this reminds me of when I myself was a child, growing up, learning from cartoons, and then growing up and watching these new cartoons that don't offer anything for children, that just look at children like they're stupid, like kids are stupid. Kids aren't stupid. And this show does not underestimate its audience. It's cleverly written... And it goes under the assumption that its viewers are intelligent. That is why I like this show. I'm That's liking this idea. I... The hell? Was that a... What was that? I have no idea. Whatever that was, say, say what you are. No, I that guess we got another coward on our hands. Did I mention that your show is is Bush League? Because it's Bush League. We got people interrupting each other. We got people making some noises and then not owning. That is not them. normal, and I don't know why it's happening, but it's really pissing me off. Mm. Well, anyway, you know, if what were you if saying? You, I don't, man. I mean, now I'm I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to uh, feel remorse for for bastardizing this thing that people consider to be innocent and pure. Because people watch My Little Pony and they like that it's innocent and pure. That's what they like about this show. That it's unbastardized. Am I right? I believe so. That is definitely the reason for some. And people look at me and they say, do you feel remorse? And I say, remorse for what? You uh, You people have done everything in the world to me. Doesn't that give me equal right? If you look at me and you say that I'm the devil and you put me in a cell, what do you think is going to happen when I get out of here? You people have done everything in the world to me. And you've looked at me like I'm, I'm a sinner and I'm the cause of all these problems. Are we not all the monsters of this world? What you have done is simply taken a different direction with it, I feel. You have not bastardized it. You have simply given it a different face. I did not do anything that, that society should look down on. And I've done nothing that I should be ashamed of. I did not break the law. And, you know, the problem, the, your problem, is that you don't understand me. And that's fine because I don't understand you either. But I don't put you in a jail cell because of it. I don't condemn you because of it. I'm not going to put you up on the cross like Jesus Christ. Well, then, let me ask. Next why question. do you? Yes. Well, why do you? Again, this has been asked, but I need I need a little more to this. Why is it then that you feel that they are condemning you if you have broken no laws? All you've done is given a new face to something that we have only seen one way. I'm telling you exactly why. Because people need to look at something and say, that's the problem. And they need that's what I am for them. 
that truth is the truth for them, but it's not the truth for me, and it's not the truth for anybody else who agrees with me, because my truth is the truth that I create. So you can look at me all you want and say, that guy is the devil and he's the one who is the problem for all, for all of society. And you will sleep soundly at night because you believe that. So in a world where everyone needs something to complain about or needs something to call a problem, you find yourself to be that problem? If that's what people want me to be, and I can't tell them that they're wrong because they won't listen. You know, these, pe these people will condemn me of anything. These people will convict a grilled cheese sandwich of murder, and nobody will, nobody will complain about it. Nobody will say that's weird, and they'll all just go along with it. I can't tell them that they're incorrect. Well, I have to agree. I believe it was, I think it was seven years ago now, uh, someone had a cactus run for governor of Florida, and it got about 30% of the votes. There you go. We are not sane as a society, but that does not make us wrong. Now, tell me, why why is it that you gave the, that did you know initially that uh, you were that people were going to bastardize you so for the creation of these animations? I don't know if I knew that. Did you expect it? But if you know if there's one thing that I'm that I regret, it's that I didn't do enough that I wasn't aware and you know people have people have condemned me for making a cartoon that's that's vulgar maybe I should have made 500 cartoons that were vulgar then I could have felt like I made a difference well, that's that what I am remorseful that, about well that leads me to believe that you feel that you feel that you that you don't feel that you've made a difference and I so if there are people that are condemning you, if there are people that are getting at you about it, then I feel that you have made a difference. You, There are a few that I've talked to that have been inspired by your work. So you have made a difference, whether you find it significant or not. Well, those people who have been inspired by me, I say to them, you can be inspired by anybody that you want to be inspired by, but I am not responsible for what you do. Because my philosophy is just, when you make something, make it good and make it witchy. But other than that, don't cast the blame on, don't cast the blame on somebody else because you have to take responsibility for your own actions. And that's all I have to say. Those people, have nothing, those people have nothing to do with me because I am not of that generation. A teacher can teach a student, but the student is responsible for his own actions. It's very true. Not that you've that's taught right. anyone anything, of course. Well, I mean... You know what I mean. The people that have been inspired, damn it. Well then. Mm -hmm. See, what else is there to discuss in this matter? Hmm. Is there anything that you would like to discuss? Let me yourself? ask you a question. All right. Can I ask you something? You may. Do you uh, do you smoke cannabis? I do not. No. Do you any kind of recreational drug? No. I, it's not that I have a problem with anyone that does. I just have never been curious about it in my life. Now, I don't see anything that's wrong with drugs. I think that drugs are all right if you don't misuse them. Uh, if you misuse them and you're misinformed about them, then you make a big thing about them. And that's what society has done. I don't ex – and, you know, that's how I feel about cannabis – which, you know, it's something that people use to unwind, but that's not how I feel about LSD, which uh, is a drug, which it, it's less of a drug and more of a religiously significant awareness, uh, mind-expanding apparatus that comes from the intelligence of the universe. And people look at my cartoons and they say, that's a guy who smokes a lot of cannabis, but is that true? No, it's not. Cannabis is not the influence of my cartoons. It's not where my creativity comes from. Well, have you used LSD or some or some drug like that in the use of creating these cartoons? No, because my cartoons are all about the consciousness that exists already inside my mind. And it's something that just exists without me needing some kind of, uh, you know... Uh, mind-expanding apparatus to tap into because I don't need that apparatus. 
I don't need it. it. It's already there. Well, then tell me this. With all of that running around your mind, all these ideas, how is it that you decide which ones will come out of that world in your mind and into this physical world as an animation, a picture, whatever? It's, you know, it all just comes down to when you look inside yourself, what you see. Um... I don't look inside myself and see good or bad. I just see all of it. I look inside myself and I see, oh, that's a funny joke. I'll take that and I'll put that in a cartoon. That's a funny joke. I'll take that. I'll put that in a cartoon. That could be that could be cool for a dramatic moment or that could be cool for a creepy moment. That could be cool for a cinematic or a theatrical moment. I'll put those in cartoons. I just take, I pluck them out one by one and I put them in. That's what I see when I look inside myself. I see all of it. What, well, what is it that you see when you look inside yourself? I mean, looking past the, the ideas, the creation, what is it that you see yourself to be in your head? What is the image that, that you get? I'm just me, and I've just always been me, and that's all that I've ever been, and that's all that I'll ever be. But people have made me out to be so much more. People say that I've corrupted the minds of young children, even though, even though it's what they've done themselves. People say that I'm the devil or that I'm Jesus Christ. They look at me and they say that I'm guilty of all this crime. Should I feel blame? Should I feel bad? Did I, I kill people or did I instruct people to kill? It's all conjecture or hearsay. And I'm not saying that I've done any of it, and I can't say that I've done any of it, but I will be condemned of all of it because that's what society needs. They, needs to, they need to look upon me and say that I am the one who's the troublemaker. But the whole time, you've been you. You've never been anything that they have made you out to be. You've simply been you is what I'm getting here. That's right. All right, that's an excellent statement. I'm happy to hear that. Everyone needs the, everyone needs to think like that. They need to realize that we are neither gods nor devils. We are simply us, each as an individual. That's right. Let's see then. Well, because of this uniqueness, what do you feel drives us to create the things that we do, be it mayhem or even a simple animation, whether it be uh, something as huge as a charity to say as a huge charity to save the lives of less fortunate people or children or as simple as just like you know a two minute video game something like that what do you feel drives us to create what drives you to create uh, oh it's a, you know it's in our bones in our bones it's in our dna it's what god has put in our souls and it's what is existent in our life force it's something that's been around since before you know any kind of coyotes or or demons or cockroaches has been crawling on their bellies in this realm and it's all that exists and it's what has caused man to uh kind of pull themselves up from whatever they were to become whatever they are what do you find mankind to be? Everything that has ever been and everything that will ever be is what I am and is what I see. All right, all right. Now, you have said that creation is is just in our bones. It's in all of us. Now, what do you, def what do you define as creation? Just basically the ability to create anything, or is it just pencil to paper? For me, it's always been artistic ability, uh, pencil to paper, pencil to paper, uh, you know, pen to tablet, things I personally am not very good at, uh, but how would you define creation? Now, you say you're not very good at it, but you're doing it right now yourself in your journalism. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing that all the soldiers in Iraq are talking about it's the same thing that Jesus Christ talked about. It's the same thing that Buddha and Muhammad talked about. It's the same sermon that's been preached time and time again since the beginning of time. It's all about the what causes man to create and what is the fuel source for what drives us towards the divine. 
you know exactly what it is because you do it and you feel it and you live it. I've heard you say it, and now I know that it's true through you. So don't tell me that you don't know what it is. It's you, what you do is the same thing that what I do. It's the same thing. So simply, who we are and what we do each and every day is creation. It's just us. Yeah. I mean, if it's if it's not something that we do that that separates us from the coyotes and the scorpions, then what is it? Because I've seen those coyotes and they're out there in the you know in the prairies and they're very you know they got their eyes open they're aware they're looking around at everything that's around them but they're just living for their next meal it's not what humans are like we don't just live for our next meal and i'm not saying that humans live through progress because you can you can build you can dig a hole in the ground and build it up into a city and then start a war and that's not progress that's just change because that's not moving forward that's just moving along the side and that's what the human race is that's what intelligence is that's what the universe is and that, that's how the universe facilitates facilitates itself through intelligence the little drunk right now i understand it happens well all right then so we are about 45 minutes into this uh, i think this is where i'm going to cut my portion now if you have the time uh, would you be all right with some of our hosts, with some of us in the host chat and those in the viewer chat asking you a few of their own questions? Of course. All right, then. So, host chat, do you have anything to ask dear Max here? Well, I do have a quick statement before we get to that. Uh, <clears throat> apologize for all the audio issues. Unfortunately, it looks like my sound card decided to play around with me today. I have put it in the corner and aimed a gun at its head, so hopefully it'll start behaving. <laughs> all right so all right, questions then. anyone so what's up with uh, all the philosophical stuff man i told you i just you know that's the world that i live in i don't live in your generation or your world i don't live inside boxes or confinements in any way so you're like a spirit free we're all Free spirits. Everything. We're all spirits. It just depends on how much you can tap into that. We can all tap into it as much as anyone else can. It's just whether or not we choose to. Whether or not we choose to be prisoners in the world of physicalness. All right, then. Which you obviously do. I can tell that you do. And I, f I feel a great sadness for you. Because <laughs> that's not what I would do with my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, then. Well, you you laugh, but I think you need to read into what he's saying. Probably so. Yes. Well, what we have here is a fellow who definitely believes in the logic of I reject the reality and subject with my own. I don't know he's doing it right. That's right. All right. So, anyone else in the host chat here? Would you fancy yourself as a bit of a cartoon geek like I am? Sure. I don't know. Yes. I mean, I guess it, de it depends on how you define gar a cartoon geek. Maybe I am, maybe I aren't. But I've never, uh, you know, I've never once claimed in my life to be able to uh, coincide my definition with your definition. So they well, might be different. Like, they uh, might be different. They might not be. I have no idea. I don't claim to know. Well, what I mean is, like, do you, like, watch a bunch of um, older cartoons and know but uh, not much about them? Like, earlier, before, I mentioned uh, Bob Clampett, and um, D-Pad didn't know who he was until someone pointed him out. The only thing I watch is Married with Children on Netflix, and that's it. It's a good show, oh, actually. Oh, man, married. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that. that's, that's good enough. All right, I got a bit of an anagamous question. Now, we know we all live in a universe that has infinite choices. However, sometimes it feels like we only have one choice or the other. Usually with that one choice, we're only allowed to make that one choice. And once that one choice is ma made, we have to live with the consequences of that choice because the other is no longer available. Keeping that in mind, so with these two possible choices, the one big question that I always have to ask when it comes to two definite choices, but only one of them can be taken, is party cannon or base cannon? 
Uh, I, don't know the dif- I don't know the difference between the two. You didn't even. I thought you guys were going to ask me, uh, muffins or cupcakes. You didn't ask me that. You didn't Sorry, ask me but I like to what throw the best pony was. I thought that was part for the course. It is, but I like to throw curveballs here and there. We love doing curveballs. I'm not even confirming that I've seen this cartoon that you guys will watch. All right, well, then not confirming the cartoon, but the idea of one cannon that can shoot out confetti and blast away changing demons, and another one that has literally the musical power to blast an entire... uh, a demon with the personification of complete chaos off into another realm of existence. Which one would you rather prefer? You said the second one was a canon of music. Yes. No, I like music. And that's why ladies like me. Because, I, you know, they hear me go, Hey now, I am all around you, and I am all within you. And they say, Hey man, you I can feel that soul in that music that you play and I say, Yeah, that's what I do. And that's why so many women identify with me, and that's why I have so many lady friends. Sounds like so a I'm gonna go with the music cannon. Alright, he's going with the alt demon killing music cannon. Alright. Alright, and Vayner the music or what is your favorite genre? Music? Yeah. Favorite genre of music? The monkeys. I tried out for the monkeys, but I didn't get on. I didn't get in. They wouldn't let me. Because I was a convicted Bubblegum pop. Up. Now, you mentioned this during a previous response, saying I feel like, why not? Let's bring it up. Who do you feel is a best pony, in which case? Shetland. Because the Shetland pony is, uh, you know, very intelligent, and for its size, it is actually the most uh, strong pony that exists. Oh come on, and the, the most Shetland... strong horse overall. <laughs> you you got to be kidding me! The Shetland pony really—that's that's just an arbitrary answer. Everybody says Shetland pony because they don't know any other pony breed. All right, name one other. Okay. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest here. We have been once upon a time, so yeah, little sucker hit hard. Uh, <laughs> Actually, even I don't maybe know any other pony people, breeds. I only know Shetland. So. Maybe the reason people don't know any other pony breed is because you don't need to know any other pony breed because that's the only one that's worth knowing is the Shetland. Okay, I love that answer. Okay. <laughs> yes. He, he got me. There you go. So then, anyone else in this host chat here? No. Nope. I got one. I got one legitimate one, at least to a degree. Uh, Max, you said earlier that um, you basically you pick out ideas from your mind that you throw together to create these animations, these images, and these jokes. So you say that every time you work on something, it's a collage of different ideas that come to mind just on, on, out of spur out of the moment. Is that a question? Or is that a statement? You can say it to both if you want. I, guess, I mean, I guess... Yeah, I mean, yeah. You uh, you just echoed back something to me that I said earlier, so I guess I can't disagree. But it's like I said, I look, I you know, I look inside myself, and I am a reflection of what the or the world is made of me, and I am a reflection of society, and that's all that I am. So I just pick and choose from what is inside of me when I look inside, and that's how I make these cartoons. Well, I was, well, also then let me ask you this: what? Do you feel made you? Do you think society shape, uh, shaped you in any way? Which That's what I've been saying this whole time. Well, yes. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. All right, then. So anyone else? Well, right. I suppose that this question has to be answered. Um... In a world of intense culinary confections, many of a baked good oh, variety... Oh, sorry, say the damn just question. Just ask it, just oh. ask it straight. If fine, 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 fine. You people are terrible. Okay. <laughs> Muffins or cupcakes? Buzz kills. Yes. What's the question? Muffins or cupcakes? Muffins or cupcakes? Muff cakes. Okay, okay. I'm afraid I can't argue with that either. <laughs> oh, yeah, the best of both worlds. Rock on. Uh, you take a oh, you take a muffin and you frost it. It's a muff cake. Oh yeah. 
Uh, yes, but which yeah, variety what? of muffin makes done, the best muffin cake? I think I've done cake? that before in my life. Okay. Well, let's not go into that philosophical discussion. Yeah, we'll be here all night. <laughs> this is a follow-up. What all variety right. of muffin makes the best muff cake? All right, now, why don't we let some of the viewers ask their questions? All right, now, I can either ask them to you, uh, or we can, or you can just look at the chat and answer the ones that you find you'd like to answer. Well, I'm not looking at the chat, so you can ask me. All right, that sounds all right, good. Then. Chat room, just so you know, we will entertain questions. Make sure you have them italicized and underlined, or we will ignore them because we won't be able to really see them that much. Uh, please try to refrain from spamming questions, or our banners will make sure they smack you so hard with a hammer you can't see straight. All right, I'm being momentarily called away, so uh, Circuit, do me a favor, take care of that for a moment. I'll be right back. Certainly. Let's see here. Um... Da, da, da. Wow, there are some very interesting questions here. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Wow. Okay. Hey, Blank, do you see any good questions here? Um, uh, I'm still I'm still stuck on my cell phone, man. My computer's still rebooting. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, okay, how do you... Uh, let's see... Um, all right, here's a generic question. Uh, what is your favorite show, show slash movies? Or movie? Mm -hmm. It's uh, The Simpsons. Uh, my favorite movie is... Uh, Terms of Endearment, the movie. Huh, I can't, well, the Simpsons, huh? Pretty nice. Do you still like the uh, new season, or you, uh, or you feel like the old one was a better season? I, w I still watch it, and I still enjoy it. But, I, you know, I mean, people say, man, this show sucks, but I don't, you know, is it as good as it once was? No. But does that mean that it's horrible now? I don't think that that's true. I still watch it, and I still like it. And I've, I've never seen Terms of Endearment, but it's my favorite movie. Well, nobody Why says do you I have, have to watch, watch a movie, movie for it to be, it to be favorite. my favorite movie. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. You know, great minds think alike. That's why we said the same thing at the same time. Uh. <laughs> uh, but wait, don't great minds think for themselves? Nope. Okay. Think alike. All right. Sounds like a plan to me. All right. Let's see. Um, there was uh, actually a pretty good question here. Uh, um, during your downtime, when you actually have time to play video games, are there any specific games that you really enjoy playing overall, or are you just um, try it, the test of waters there all the time? Who says I play video games at all? Mm. You know what video games are? They're artificial experiences, and we don't we we play video games and we tell our minds that it's real, but it's not real; it's fake. Why are we lying to ourselves with these artificial games? Why do we think that we need that when we can go outside and we can climb a mountain or we could hike a trail or we could fly a kite, but instead we're just staying inside and we're popping a pill? Because it's more entertaining to be able to blow up about 500 people and say you did it without going to jail afterwards? That's because you... That's because you don't have the power of your mind. You live in the physical realm, but I live in the spiritual realm. And I can do anything in my mind that you can do in video games, and it's free. So I don't understand why you're paying money for video games. Because we enjoy the experience. We enjoy being able to live other lives within what we see as a world we would like to experience. But what you can do it for free! You can do it for free, don't you understand what I'm saying? Some I've said it a million times. Really Anything you want. If I want to kill somebody, I don't need to kill you. I have it up here in my mind. Ah, I have the same ability too. Maybe yeah. not visually, but I can do it in my head. Yes. But some people do not have this ability with which you talk about. They require the, the uh, secondary nature of books, video games, TV to experience such, such things. It's so fucking hot in here. Ooh, actually, Anchor's got a has a good one. Um, what do you like to get crunked on? Well, like I said, 
uh, LSD is a no, 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 no. Uh, you know, my, no, no. I'm not talking like herbs and pills. I'm talking about the drink, uh, the ambrosia of the people: beer, liqueur, wine. That's you know, I only drink whiskey. Whiskey, so, nice. Because that's that's all that a man will drink. A man wouldn't have any need to drink anything else. Mm. All right. Uh, sorry about that. I'm here. All right. Uh, I'm not sure how much was answered. But I, the interview's run for an hour now, so I think that's where we're going to cut it. Uh, Max, thank you so much for being on. Uh, you can hang around if you'd like, or if you're busy. I don't want to hang around, but I would like to give my final peace of mind to finish off the interview. Please do. I have been demonized by you bronies, and every single brony who's listening to this, you have demonized me, and you've said that's the devil when you look at me. And what do you do? You take me and you put me in a jail cell and you say that that's the end when you're in that jail cell. But for me, that's not the end. That's just the beginning. Because there's a whole universe in there. A whole world. And I'm free. Crimson, you really got to kill that Skype sometimes. All right, then. Oh, well, Max, thank you for the words of wisdom. You've actually given all... Uh, excuse me, you've given us all a lot to think about. It's, uh, it's very impressive. Thank you very much for being on with us. No problem. Mm -hmm. Definitely the most eye-opening and mind-blowing experience we've ever had on the show. All right, then. So, with that, I'm going to pass the show back over to Circuit for the rest of it. Circuit?